So geomechanics issues in block cave design, what we do is we're basically, we're trying to formulate a geotechnical model, which, uh, which, which kind of takes all the information that we have in the area, puts it together and helps us understand the relationship of different pieces of information in the mine. Okay. So that is the first thing. The second thing is that we have to understand how this ore body is going to cave or, uh, or what will be necessary to make it cave. And that is the assessment of capability. Now, as we went through in the, in the uh, overview of the block cave mining method, uh, you know, the things to realize are that we need this ore body to cave, to break up into small pieces, we need to know what size those pieces are, and we need to know how strong the rock is and how much excavations or how far apart the excavations need to be so that they are stable during the course of the mining activity. So uh, the assessment of capability and the assessment of fragmentation, necessary to know what size pieces we're gonna get, so that helps us design or decide what size equipment we're going to use. And then some level of understanding about surface subsidence. Oh, understanding surface subsidence is very important because you need to place your infrastructure out of the subsidence areas so that um, you know, it's not affected by, uh, by the block caving activity. Uh, some of the mines uh, we've had some issues with. Uh, we were very fortunate, for example, in Palabora, that the, the shafts were not influenced by the production and service shafts are not influenced by the subsidence that occurred uh, on the other side of the block cave, away from the shafts. Okay, so it's important to know where the subsidence is. Uh, you know, is occurring or is likely to occur and then place the infrastructure accordingly. The layout of the excavations and levels, again, you need to make sure that the production levels are, are stable and, uh, it, you know, last during the life, life of the mine. They need to be designed adequately. Uh, the ground support needs to be designed adequately and the levels need to be spaced out, uh, you know, so that there's no damage to the levels. Finally, there are some hazards associated with, uh, with block cave mining. These include uh, rock bursts, air blasts, and uh, mud rushes, muck rushes, and we go through some of those issues as well. Understanding these hazards and conducting an adequate risk analysis helps us plan the mine in such a way that we address these risks and make sure that the operations are safe during the life of the mine. Formulating the geotechnical block model basically in, you know, involves collecting all the geotechnical information from the site, including drill hole data, uh, we get some mapping data from the surface, some underground mapping data if we're lucky, and then uh, all the boreholes, uh, all the core that we get from the boreholes, uh, we get them tested and get some rock testing, rock, you know, geomechanical properties of the rock, we get that information together. We also include in the geotechnical block model uh, you know, major structural features and controls which, uh, which need to be understood before we uh, plan or lay out the mine. We will be doing a statistical analysis of the collected data. And you know, once, you, once you do that, you know what your, what your maximum strengths are, what your uh, distribution of rock strengths uh, or fragmentation characteristics are. So, Taking all this geotechnical information together and then putting it into a model helps us conduct some of these analysis so, <coughs> excuse me, so that we can assess uh, what the ground conditions are likely to be and how to design the mine. 
the spatial distribution of that base data, like I said, is important for us to identify several things. In fact, uh, one of the first mines that I worked on in block caving was the DOZ mine. And when we were doing the assessment of the mine, we were trying to figure out where is the best place to start caving the mine. And uh, you know, we used the spatial distribution of that base data to identify the best location for starting the mine. Uh, that is one of the considerations. Of course, in the DOZ mine, there were several other considerations that came into play. But uh, you know, in a greenfield project, uh, understanding what that base data looks like helps us plan the mine. Now, the classification parameters for the mine for the uh, uh, for the uh, block cave, basically, you are, what you're trying to do is trying to uh, again assess the ground conditions in different parts and identify uh, the required ground support in different areas or understand the stress buildup in different areas, trying to, un, uh, trying to de uh, design the progression of the block cave as well as the, um, uh, the ground support required. 